Oh my gosh. Well, hello everyone. This is Jeff of Tal Flare Mouse. Well, it's been almost two weeks since I posted my last video and I just want to give you an update of what is going on. The weather's been great, been in the low 90s. There's no shortage of projectiles to test out. It's just been really difficult to find a guest shooter to help me film stuff. In this video, I want to give you an idea how many different projectiles I have ready to test out. Now these are some really cool looking projectiles sent to us by Brian. He also made the bunker buster slugs that you probably remember from a, about a month ago. Now these have a, an aluminum aluminium uh, housing with a lead core in the center. Focus there, dang it. But I, I really think that uh, green anodized aluminum nose cone looks fantastic. And look at that presentation box. It looks like a, a box of chocolates. And yes, we have another one. Uh, this one is aluminum with a five millimeter tungsten core. But instead of the green nose cone, we have the red nose cone. These look sharp too. Now it's very possible these may be able to penetrate an AR-500 plate. That's what I'm hoping at least. Now each slug weighs about 20 grams. So that means we can get some pretty good velocity out of these if we really pump it up. Now Brian got the outside diameter correct at 0.675 inches and we'll use a sabo with these of course the sabo and we got another one from brian aluminum with stainless steel nose and steel core i think it's safe to say that brian has indeed caught the slug bug so does anyone recognize what that nose is made out of i have a feeling he either looks through granger or mcmaster car catalogs for his inspiration here's another one aluminum with a copper core and a blue anodized aluminum nose cone. Did this get cooler and cooler as we progress? Now here's an oddball one, again by Brian. It is a, a spot welding tip, brand new by, mind you, these things are probably not very cheap, but it's encapsulated in a, I don't know if it's, a, it's an epoxy resin of some sort, but that should work really well to give us much better engagement with the Sabo. The Sabo. And another design by Brian, um, I'm not even sure what this is, but <laughs> he said so many slugs and we got to get these things tested. They're just fantastic. And then I think this is the last one. There might be another I missed, but uh, this is another one by Brian. It's a kind of a transparent slug cast in some kind of epoxy with a quarter 20 bolt and a T nut and a security nut on the front as the nose cone. Uh, just very creative design and uh, I'm gonna try loading some of these maybe half of them in just a federal target load shell and others I'll hand load myself now here's an interesting one from Dimitri this is a tech rim Russian slug mounted to an AQ tail wad the AQ tail wad comes from ballistic products so it's essentially a rifled slug and a rifled tail piece. It should be self spinning in a smooth bore. I've had these slugs for over a year and I need to get them tested. Sorry, Dimitri. Now we have a few loaded ammo. Uh, I believe Mike sent these and these are D duplex. Uh, generally, we had terrible results testing these in very hot weather over pressure problems and we'll try to get to these soon. Another factory loaded slug is this Rio uh, frag slug it's called, I believe. Again, sent to us by Mike. Mike also sent us these door breaching rounds, three boxes of these things. And uh, they literally say door breaching on the side. And you'll notice that they're loaded in a very unique, uh, like all plastic shell. That's pretty cool. But we gotta find the suitable targets for these, hopefully at door, so we can test these. And he sent three boxes of another type of door breacher. These uh, seem to be a lot more massive. Look at the size of that thing. And it's loaded into a brown hole, just like that. Hole, hole, I don't know, can you, H-U-L-L, -L, that's how you say it. Now, one of Greg's viewers uh, sent in these Remington AccuTips in two and three quarter and three inch. There's several boxes of these things. And these things can be very difficult to find and very expensive. A friend of mine at work took a mule deer with one of these at around 270 yards. So naturally, we're gonna to have to set up a very long range accuracy test with these. 
Now I still have a few different slugs from the Goodell Shot Shell Company. And uh, these are, again, things of beauty. Now offhand, I don't remember the exact names of these things, but you'll recognize them if you go to their website. They have a ton of different slugs uh, that you can find in almost every gauge, from 10 gauge down to 410. Now these all use the Azot wad, which comes from Russia, or came from Russia. They're almost impossible to get now. But these types of slugs are some of the easiest you can possibly load. You dump in the powder, dump these in, and roll crimp it, and you're done. And quite a few of Ryan's slugs that he sold there required the use of the Azot wad, which he had to get separately. Now over a year ago, Ryan started designing a mold for his own wad design that doesn't come from Russia, that doesn't come from Italy, that is made in the United States. And this is what the mold looks like. It's probably about thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of machining and steel right there, folks. And what I understand, he can produce about sixteen hundred wads a day using this very expensive mold. And it'll still take a long time to pay that thing off. And we will be getting a bunch of the slugs from Goodell to test out, record with the high-speed camera, and show how stable they are and all that. Now before you could buy the slugs, but then you'd have to try to find those Russian Azot wads. Now the slugs come with that American made wad. And of course, we've got some contributions from Evan. And he sent this box containing, I don't know, four or five pounds of slugs recently. <laughs> and they're all individually wrapped, which drives me crazy. Now the first one, which I've had for about a year, is this big old monster one with a hollow base on it. It may very well be stable without any spin, but it's a big old sucker that may go through the lead plate. The next design, I think he calls the chocolate slug. It kind of looks like a Tootsie Roll if you squint, <laughs> but it's, it's 3D printed and you know how I feel about 3D printed stuff. Everyone thinks it's the best thing in the world, but uh, often it'll fail because it's so brittle, especially when you have a big uh, mass of steel in the nose, it may crush under its own weight. We'll see, because often I'm wrong about things like that, but based on past experience, 3D printing has not been the solution. And he made these other steel slugs, uh, I believe out of an armature, really cool. Uh, kind of like the slugs we've tested in the past, just a little different design though. It definitely looks like something, uh, you know, a Klingon would shoot at you if they got mad at you. And then we have another design made from a commutator, again in that little plastic bag that drives me crazy. Just put them all in one bag, Evan. But anyway, uh, similar to the design we've tested before, uh, should work out well. And I think we've got like 10 of these to shoot, so that's a full days of worth of filming there, right there. And then he sent some slugs made out of what looks like particle board. Uh, these are very, very lightweight, and I'm not sure if they have enough mass to to build up enough pressure to get the powder to ignite. So I'm gonna have to research these a little bit. We got another really unusual design. I have no idea what this is even made out of. It could be titanium or titanium if you're Adam West. Uh, again, a kind of a Diablo shape. Might be self-stabilizing. Definitely a very unique design. Another classic Evan Perry design is this brass one, probably made out of a knob of some sort. Really nicely machined using his crude machining method. Looking forward to testing this one out. Another slug, I have no idea what its origin is. It looks like a impeller off of a pump or something. Uh, the creativity of Evan never ceases to amaze me though. Here we have sort of a pod shape. I believe it's made out of steel, maybe even cast iron. I'm not sure. Uh, that'll be an interesting one to figure out how to load. Maybe you can recognize what this thing came from. And it, it may be made out of titanium also. Uh, just a classic Evan Perry design though. The next one from Evan is this really long one. It's some kind of a me metal with a steel penetrator core. This may be a good candidate for the, for the lead plate. That's gonna be a fun one to test out though. But as you can see, we got a lot of designs from Evan Perry here. I put them all in separate bags so I wouldn't lose one or two. It's really easy to misplace a slug when they're all individually wrapped like that. So there we go. Now I just recently recast all three of the lead plates. You probably didn't know we had three of these things. Uh, 
each one weighing 30 pounds. Now in my last video I mentioned that we damaged our chronograph somehow. You can see the screen's all black and all busted up. I have really no idea how, what happened there. I bought a, a used one on eBay. It was only 50 bucks. And then a couple days later, well, I got this in the mail. It's a premium Caldwell chronograph. It comes with a tripod and lighted uh, sky shields and all that stuff. And I think a viewer named Mike sent this to us kind of anonymously. I, I really do appreciate it, but I, I consider chronographs, tables, ballistic gel, stuff like that as consumable items, stuff that's eventually going to get shot up and damaged and worn out and will need to be replaced. But thank you very much. You're a, you're a great person for helping us out. And last but definitely not least, we've got some interesting projectiles coming from Kyle, the master machinist of Wales. But as you can see, we have absolutely no shortage of slugs. Just need some help shooting them. It'd be foolish for me to go out and test them by myself. That'd be like going swimming in the ocean by myself. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you soon. Instabilized, discarding Sabo Tracer, known as the Sabo. The, uh, the Sabo? The Sabo round works like an arrow. The Sabo is there to fill the 120 millimeter barrel and to keep the dart dead center. The moment it clears the barrel, the Sabo falls away. The, uh, the Sabo? 